So welcome everyone to Rise and Shine Yoga. And we're going to be working against a wall if you have one. It's a great way to have another point of contact. I've got the wall behind me to start with. And also you can probably see in the corner of your screen, I have a chair. It doesn't have to be a mid-century modern chair. It could be a folding chair. But the chair is optional. It also allows a point of contact when we start to get into Warriors and in particular Warrior 3, which is a really intermediate to advanced pose. And some, some people find it inaccessible, but with the chair, it's entirely possible if you could access it. So the last piece, the final two pieces, the usual towel roll, which we'll start by giving ourselves a little bit of a warm up. And for advanced students, or maybe those that just want to try it, we can do the practice at some point. I'll show you how I'm going to rope myself up and take the, the strap around the area of the diaphragm. Okay. And so you can sit in any comfortable position and decide, this is a rather long strap, uh, whether you want to try this. And if you are, you might as well try it now. So this is around what the diaphragm is. You may find it somewhat constricting. And given the moment we're living in, the diaphragm gets constricted anyway under stress. So if you have, have this strap or you just take your hands in any seated position to the side ribs and just take a few breaths to feel the expansion of this, we'll call it the barrel rim of the mid torso, the diaphragm. And as you do this, you can just feel the entire circumference of breaths. It's not only the front ribs, which I have a tendency to lift to breathe more. But 60% of your breath ability or your lung capacity is in the back ribs. So just close your eyes, feel that the area above the kidneys and the lower back ribs can also fill. And those can be used not only to breathe, but to engage the muscles in the back here, the posterior serratus. And when we're lifting our arms up, we wanna to try to lift from those roots in that area of the back of the diaphragm. So that's the plan, but it all starts very easy in child's pose. And we'll take a, our towel roll and use it for our head. So you can work with the strap or abandon it. I'm gonna keep it on just for fun and making a bit of a fashion statement this morning. And also just working this area, which for me tends to get a little loose. So let's take the head to the towel roll, sink back into child's pose. And take a few breaths just to release the arms and then press them forward. So with the head down, Inhale, think of dragging the bent elbows, which are down on the mat toward you. And exhale, lift the elbows. Just a small movement as you push forward with the hands. See if you can release the low back a little. Come over halfway, shift the towel roll on the diagonal with the left, drop in. Same thing, we can work with soft arms or even like a pulling or a rowing motion. Inhale and then a pushing motion. 
So this is incremental, just a small movement of the shoulders. And trying to feel those roots in the back ribs. And then over in the other diagonal, same thing. And then back to center. Place the blanket down. Try a down dog. And if you're near the wall, you can use it to put your heels up the wall. Now, watch as I place my head down on the blanket roll, which may be too shallow for some of you to keep your head there and lift your hips high. But adjust your posture if you can. If you're near a wall, you can have the heels up the wall. And you can bend the knees and straighten. Bend, inhale, and straighten. And then gliding forward to high push up and coming down hands and knees. Take the towel, roll in your hands, and drop it behind the knees to squish it in the crease of the knees. And then sitting in Virasana. So once again, if you're playing with this, coming in late and playing with this optional strap, so there's a, a Hindu myth, which I'll tell you as we move into our flexion with the fingers pulling like taffy, broadening the shoulder blades, and then exhale, standing up. Inhale, push, drop the head, and exhale. So there was a snake. This is, this is old yoga mythology. There was a snake that was encircling the world and binding the waters, all the waters from flowing. So there was a god named Indra, which was kind of like the Thor of Hinduism and did battle with the snake to release the waters to flow. So we're working this area thinking the strap, if you are playing with it, is like that snake, that binding snake. And then going up, Vanahastasana, releasing the left hand down and breathing. If it's too much to sit in Virasan with the blanket roll, abandon, shift, go to cross-legged. Come up, inhale other side. So I'm working from, whether I have the strap or not, I'm working from this diaphragm area to try and loosen the fascia. Super good. And then let's come up, take that blanket roll down and place the frontal hip bones by the feet back a little bit. Right on that little towel roll. Adjust your legs so they're not too wide and come up on your forearms and breathe. So make sure you're on the frontal hip bones, but you are pushing back a little bit to get the front of the legs and the hip flexors get a little bit of stretch here. So you can add to this, dragging the left knee up, looking toward it and Think of sliding the knee away from you and pushing the right hip down. So you're stretching the right hip flexor. And then, like a baby crawl, up comes the right knee. And that's just where you're looking. But in the back of your brain, the real work is pushing that upper left hip into that bolster and getting a nice little stretch. Should feel good, if not, modify. And then kicking back, and we'll do some cobra push-ups. So you take the head down, still in the blanket roll, hands wide off the mat, roll the shoulders forward, press your frontal hip bones into the towel roll, the inhale, come up. And then roll the head, roll the shoulders, and press into the 
towel roll. So double hip flexor sensation working to your ability. And if you have the strap around the midsection diaphragm, you're feeling perhaps the posterior serratus in the back of the strap helps you lift up. One more, and then let's press back to child's pose once again, walk the hands back, place the head. And the option to stay for a few breaths or come up to your downward dog again. And let the head float this time in between the arms, bend the knees, and then launch the arms from that mid-back position. Inhale, come forward to plank pose, toning your bandhas, Udiyana Bandha, Mula Bandha, and then coming down. Sit back into Virasa and take the towel roll into your belly and take a child's pose. Here, we've done this before, or curl the toes under and try the towel roll Bandha challenge of picking the towel up in your belly. You can keep your knees bent. And if you have the right body mechanics, the legs constrained, the arms constrained, the towel will eventually fall out. Let's come down. And one more or two more things with the towel roll. So now placing it in front of you, let's spin ourselves around. And if you're near the wall, distance yourself in such a way that we're going to take the towel roll to the, the same area. So even if you don't have a strap roped around you or if it's uncomfortable, now you have the sensation of the strap or some sort of pressure underneath the shoulder blades. See if you can stretch your legs forward and if you're near your wall, you can press the toe mounds, spread the toes. And if it's too intense, it should be okay after what we just did on the front of the body, but you can always bend your knees. So tone the legs and you can reach the arms up and over if you want, take a big morning stretch. And as you stretch, push a little bit down into that towel roll and see if you can feel how the reaching arms behind you are emanating from this place in the towel roll. Reach up to the sky and then lay the arms down like Shavasana and bend the knees. So inhaling and exhale, lift the hips up two inches and then set them down. Inhale and exhale, lift, toning pelvic floor, and set them down. One more lift, you can come even higher as if coming toward a bridge pose. Breathe, keeping the pelvic floor toned. Come down and drop the knees with wide feet over to the left. The arms blossom out like a snow angel, the sides. And give yourself a little massage on the side ribs and drop the knees to the other side. Just start to glide, We're giving ourselves a mid back rub. And these little connections of the spine, the paraspinals, and the fine muscles and joints, the lattice work of the ribs, they get bound up. So it should feel good. But let's see if we can add a little bit. And so from here, I'm gonna straighten the legs again and take the hands behind the head, interlace, do a little bit of, of core. And go ahead and bend the knees again. 
and we're going to add to our picture of lifting the hips up, perhaps the lifting of the head. So here we go, inhale. Now, before you lift the head, exhale, lift the hips up an inch or so, two inches, and then you could draw the head up. Drop the head, drop the hips, try it again. Inhale, exhale, hips first, tone the pelvic floor, and then not gonna get very far, just two inches with each. Inhale, everything's down, exhale, tone pelvic floor, lift, hips two inches, head two inches. Come down, and then rolling to the left, rolling to the right, with the knees again. Wash it out. Now let's try bridge pose, arms by the towel roll. Take an inhale and then exhale, lift the hips way up this time. And we'll slide the blanket roll forward to the sacrum as we've done in the past. Set the sacrum down, pull the knees into the body, and give a little rinse and squeeze. Okay, so let's hold the left knee and extend the right foot forward. Those new working your wall can tone the, the ball mound of the right toe against the wall. Otherwise, just tone the muscles of the leg and then start to circle with this left knee. But you have some feedback around the low back on the towel roll. This is too intense. You can always bend the right knee and do it with a non-straightened leg. Come back to center with that left knee and hold it only with the left hand. Right arm reaches up like you're gonna shake hands with a cloud. Exhale, reach back like a backstroke with the right arm. And push the right foot forward, reach the right arm back in opposite directions. And then exhale, peel open the left knee you're holding. Breathe. You can stay here or slide the right arm straight out from the shoulder. Inhale and exhale. We've done this before. The left knee comes to the center, the right hand taps it. It comes up and you play this little game, which is a subtle way to work into core. If you want a little more, instead of just doing that, slide your right hand under your head, open the left knee, inhale, exhale. Left knee comes to center, gently lift the head like you're gonna cross crunch, right elbow to left knee. Inhale, exhale. Come down, bring the knee to the center, hold both knees now, take a break, and then transfer the hands to the right knee or shin. Push the left toe mound forward into the wall if you have it, or just tone the leg. And just feel your SI joints evenly pressured against the towel roll. So this is a way to trick you or get you to become aware of your deep core. Down that sacral area, pelvic floor, toning the left leg as you circle. Big circles or small circles with the right leg. Bring it to center, hold it with the right hand. Left arm reaches up, inhale, exhale, backstroke. Now the left side expands in both directions. Left leg pushes forward to wall maybe, and left arm reaches back. Exhale, pull or glide open the right leg and just sling it. And check in with that towel roll to see if your left SI joint has popped off the towel roll, and then that's a little bit dangerous. Just slide like you're doing semaphore, your left arm straight out from your shoulder now to three o'clock, inhale. Exhale, bring the right knee to the center, the left hand taps, and open and close the scissors while getting feedback on the towel roll. Again, if it's too much to have the left leg straightened, simply have it bent. You can do this a few more times, or more advanced students slide the left hand under the base of the skull, open the right knee, exhale, cross crunch, left elbow toward right knee. 
push keep pushing into your wall if you have a, the benefit of a wall. You're also getting some feedback if you opted to take our Hindu mythology strap around the diaphragm of the frontal ribs closing to seal the deal. Come back to center, pull the left knee, and now you have both knees again. Bring the soles of the feet together, the knees wide, curl up into a ball, bottle kanasan on your back. And glide the feet a little bit toward your face and then glide them away. And I'll just open up that low back a little bit. Be careful if you have some bulging discs that bulge outward, this would be a no-no for you. And then let's place the feet down. Let's come up to another bridge. Inhale, let the shoulder blades lay flat. Exhale, come up. And with one of your hands, you can reach underneath and grab the towel as you set the hips down. Straighten the legs again, pushing in both toe mounds into the wall if you have it and hoist up that towel into your arms like you're holding a trapeze straight overhead. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, reach forward. Keep going. I've got a chair behind me restricting me, but that's okay. Now, if you want a little more, as you come up with the towel roll toward the sky, pull the left knee in, tap it. Glide the leg forward, the towel back, Towel comes up, the right knee taps. So we start to work core and keep going while I get rid of my chair for a second. And then if you want extra work, if you don't have any neck issues, you can bring the towel roll forward toward the bent knee and lift the head. Fly back, fly up. So all sorts of levels, including straightening the leg. And as we close the frontal ribs, it may be possible for advanced students to come up and down through a half boat, multi-level. Lay the arms down, bend the knees, and reach the towel roll up and circle. Big circles, let the shoulders and the head roll, keep the hips level. Warming up the shoulders. Now, pick the feet off the ground, hover the shins. And can we do a similar operation? Towel goes halfway back, knees glide, oh, two, three inches forward, and then touch. So now we're just feeling, it's open and closed. And if you do have the strap around your diaphragm, for me, it's great because I tend to let those frontal ribs, the low ribs pop open too much as I open the extremities away from one another. So can you kick the legs up to the sky, tone them and reach the towel back, and push the back of the knuckles into the ground, even though you're holding the towel, and see if you can glide the straight legs forward a little. Here's your down dog on your back. So notice the information in your back body here. Bend the knees, reach the towel up, and set the feet down. Take the towel roll to the side. A little rinse, knees left, knees right. And then you can pull your knees in, hold the creases of the knees, and roll on your spine up to seated a few times. And then we'll spin around and reorient. If you're coming in late, I'm working with a strap around the mid ribs. It may be too uh, strange for you, but gives you some feedback now as you try a downward dog. And if you have the wall walking back, heels up the wall, bending the knees, lengthening the arms from this mid back, mid diaphragm, and then straightening. Let's walk the feet toward the hands. Lengthen to a flat back, the hands on the shins. 
toning the legs and forward fold. And the knees come up through chair pose and then standing palms to heart. Really good. So again, if you're coming late, I'm working against a wall, I have a chair in front of my mat if I need it, which you may even if you're an advanced student as we move toward things like Warrior Three. So let's flow a little bit. And whether you have a strap or just your hands around this barrel rim, see if I can give you a side view. So here's what a lot of people, myself included, tend to do. Right? We're back bending. And so if I can work from this back of the strap, even when I come into a simple chair pose, I'm lifting my arms from these roots in the back. And then Ardha Ukatasana. Step back, left foot, plant warrior one. So again, I'm lengthening from this area in the back. And then leaning forward, stepping the feet together, standing, and releasing. Try the other side. Inhale, chair. Ardha Ukatasana, leaning chair. Step back, right foot, plant the heel in, reach from those roots in the back. Tailbone drops, diagonal lift. Lean forward, step the feet together, forward fold. Bend the knees, come up to your chair, palms to heart. So, you can try that again, and if it's too much, and you're feeling like you do Ardha Ukatasana and it's loading up your back, here's what you do instead. Otherwise, stay with it. Ardha Ukatasana, you can put the hands on the chair, step back left foot, then bring them up. And then you can come forward, but instead you put your hands on your chair, you step your feet together, forward fold. Chair pose, inhale, and standing, other side. So we're, we'll try about three or four of these as our sun salutation, and you have options. And so go to chair, right foot back. But I want you to feel this area, and if you don't have a strap, you can take your thumbs back there, and your fingers roll the front ribs down. Coming forward, chair, for forward fold. And the knees come up and palms to heart. Other option, inhale chair, exhale leaning chair, and then swing the arms back, they cost them, airplane arms. Step left foot back, launch the arms, and they cost them, which provides still more information with the back body. Same thing, I could lean forward here, or decosum, now I'm engaging those muscles in the back, set the feet together, come up, try the other side. Inhale, chair, lean forward, exhale, decosum, step the right foot back, swing the arms, and lengthening from the lift of those kidney weights, lean, Decosin, step the feet together, up you come, and forward fold. Chair pose, inhale, palms to heart. So, now let's move on and see if we can, some of us, move with a little bit of balance and a little bit of floating the back leg. So I'll take you through it. Chair pose, same as before. Exhale, lean forward. Swing back to airplane. Now you could step the left foot back or come to decosum. Hands could go to chair. Step back, left foot. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, bow forward. 
swing back to airplane. You can do the simple variation or lift the back heel, fly, toning the back leg. Feet together, forward fold. Bend the knees, chair pose, and then standing. Other side, inhale, chair, and Ardha Utkatasana. Vikasana, shift the weight to the left foot. So you can just step back right foot or balance. Roll the right toes back, bend the front knee, step back, inhale, lean forward, exhale. Airplane arms, fly up, lifting the back heel, and then step the feet together, forward fold. And the knees coming up and release. Short intermission for a side bend. Let's reach up, grab the right wrist, lean over, and then grab the left. One more, you should be getting warmer. And now you have the option of doing the same thing, any of those options, through Warrior Ones or Warrior Three with or without chair. Multi level. Here we go. Reaching from the back roots of the arms, chair, leaning forward. Shift the weight to right foot and either do the Akasana or watch Warrior Three Advanced Students. You can even place the hands on the chair. Roll the back toes down, bend the front knee, step back, Warrior One. Again, if it's too much loading on your back, you go to airplane. Otherwise, lean forward, lift the back heel, tone the core. Forward fold. Bend the knees, come up. Stand it, take a free breath. Work to your level, please. Inhale, Ardha Utkatasana. Weight goes to the left foot. Decide if you're going to go airplane arms, just step back, or right leg, toning the handy, the glute, roll the toes down, bend the front knee, step back with control. Lean forward. Decide. You're going to go to airplane, you're going to take the leap of faith. Knees together, forward fold. Then the knees come up and release. So let's take, if you've been using this strap, unless you really like it, let's remove it because props are only a means to an end. And we want to feel these sensations without the prop now. So let's flow a little bit, having gained a structural piece of the body, which is super important. Now it's going to feel like you have very expansive breath as you sink down, lean forward, step the left foot back in any of the variations we've had, and now pivot out to warrior two. So take the palms and face them forward. Lift the arms a little, set the shoulder blades down. Check in with your frontal ribs and make sure they're not popping out in your effort to expand the arms. But feel as you drop the shoulders, the shoulder blade roots going down to that spot we have the strap. Straighten the front leg, inhale. Triangle pose. So you can place the hand on the chair and the upper hand on the hip if you're modifying, or take it lower and spread the feet apart like you're gonna stretch the mat. Now, where are you pivoting in this pose? Not from the hips. Otherwise, disaster for the hips. You're pivoting from this mid-back. See, I'm gonna wrap this left hand around, advanced students, around the back in that same point, and pivot here. Meanwhile, I'm watching this knees. Exhale, push into the heels, Inhale, come up. Let's reverse warrior, inhale. Come to the side angle. 
right forearm on the front knee, draw the distance. Same thing, I could be all up in my, how do my legs look, how do my arms look? But if I work from that circumference of the mid ribs, I can inchworm, look at how an inchworm moves from the mid section and draw into a deeper pose. Let's come up, inhale, and turn toward the front. Step the back foot in a little bit. Warrior one, lean forward, step the feet together, forward fold. Supatasan coming up, and palms to heart. Let's try the other side. Inhale, chair. And lean forward, step the right foot back, warrior one, open warrior two. So again, you have the, so you can see my back body, the palms face forward where I'm looking. I lift the hands up, and instead of getting into the traps, I slide the shoulder blades down, I anchor them in this posterior serratus. Straight the front leg. Starts to come down. I can take the left hand of the chair, right hand to hip, spread the feet apart, maybe place the hand on the ground or the shin. But I'm going to rotate, not from the hips, keep the hips pointing down from this mid back. So if I were to show you by wrapping my right arm behind my back, this is the rotation point. Press into the feet, exhale, inhale, come up, warrior two. Reverse warrior, inhale, and exhale, side angle. So again, if I take a moment before I try to perfect the pose and just feel that inchworm midsection, like I'm trying to expand in both directions from it. Inhale, come up, square out the hips, turn face front, set the back foot in a little bit, warrior one, lean forward, set the feet together, forward fold, you can put your head on the chair. And the knees come up, inhale, and standing exhale. Let's take chair pose again. And lean forward again. Step the left foot back again, warrior one. This time, hands to hips. We're going to come into parsnips and awesome. So, again, check in with the ribs. And here's what I meant about inch warming. So, we've done a lot of work doing these flexion and extensions. So, let's try either keeping the hands here and folding forward and then hands to chair, or hands to floor, and slowly descend. Hands can walk back. And then we'll come up to either the chair or flat back. Lift the back heel and step the left knee down. Transfer your hands to your front knee, and sink in. Reach up as we did before into Baddha Hastasana, binding the hands. We'll rotate from that mid back over to the right and open the arms. Here's your twist. You can take it deeper if you want, but watch how you're working in here. Then coming down, hands to either chair or floor. Lift the front toes and back. Let's try half moon. We can take the hands to the chair or the fingers forward. Lift the back knee. And if you're working on chair, it's a little easier. Come up to standing split. Start to open. This time you do open the left hip and fly. Forward fold, a full 10 breaths while I grab some water.
Then coming up, we'll try the other side. So come up through chair, and then standing. Same deal, bend the knees, scoot the belly. And once again, you'll see in beginning yoga classes, a lot of people kick their butt out and they look like this. And so the frontal ribs are greatly exposed. So is the low back. So we're working from this mid barrel rim, leaning forward, stepping right to back, warrior one. Hands to hips, yes. But then how about hands to ribs? And what, what's going on here? And now we straighten the front leg. We try to roll the rib cage in and spreading the back ribs across and around. Use your props if you need them, hands to the floor, chair. Front knee should not be locked, but spread them out with the feet. Hopefully you're getting this. Then hands either walk up to chair or flat back. Lift the back heel, set the back knee down, come up to a comfortable lunge. And sink in. So once again, these patterns in our bodies take root and they're hard to work with. Some of them, I think, are your body's own intelligence. Like maybe I need to have this a little bit. But it's perhaps if I strengthen the core, it'll help the mid rib. So see what's going on. And then launching the arms, Ergo Hastasan, as we did earlier, the backbenders will be wanting to go back here naturally. But let's just go straight up, peek down at those frontal ribs and then rotate over to the left. Now open the twist. You can take it as deep as you want, as usual. You can slide the right elbow down, palms together. Even if you're working here, pushing the right shin down, see if you can feel the shadow of the strap. If I'm doing an extreme games twist and I come up, sometimes what I'll do is take my hands to my hips and I'll push them down and then they're set and I rotate from the mid back. Come down wherever you are, hands to chair, straight the front leg or hands to ground. Now we'll try the half moon on the other side. Chair is great to keep things orderly. So you can take the hand up or forward, come into your standing split. So I mentioned in triangle pose that we're not opening the hip, we're opening the mid back. And this is somewhat true here as we turn the right toes out, balance on the left hand. So I'm not trying to over ro rotate that right hip. And then I rotate from the mid back. This is why the instructors will tell you to reach from the inner ankle. And then come down for a full, full 10 breaths. And then let's come down to Malasan, squatting. And then we'll have a seat. Stretching the legs long and have your towel roll handy. So in forward fold, as we've been playing with, if you've been coming to class, it's fantastic if you have open hamstrings to be able to do something noteworthy and gain the national acclaim of yoga journal. Plastering your forehead to your shins. Ah. It's also nice to be safe. And let's see if we can take the towel roll and lift the knees and pull it as high up the hamstrings as you can. 
keep the knees lifted and just grab what you can and roll from left to right. So this part of the upper hamstrings where they insert insertion into the sitting bones is where younger folks and older folks who do too much yoga tear. So we want to open this up and then we can progressively roll the towel forward. A little closer to the knees, try it again. And roll from left to right. Under the knees. And as you go deeper, you sense the gradual opening of the dorsal part of the legs. You can go to the calves. And then can we abandon the blanket roll and take the full pose? You can either grab the feet, you can have your strap, first two fingers to the toes, and then fold. So even in this simple maneuver, I'm going to close my monitor because we're losing speed. But even in this simple pose, the ribs are opening and closing. So if you take your arms out like this, inhale, the frontal ribs open, and then you close. This is what's happening in your forward folds. So slide your left foot back, Janu Shashasan. I'm going to close my monitor. And let's try it. So whether you're working with a strap or not, you're gonna open the arms, the first pattern, and then come down and close the ribs. The frontal ribs close in and seal the deal. Inhale, lift up and release. Hopefully that makes sense as we switch legs. So as we work with this area around the diaphragm, we're really working with these ribs, the rib cage, the two portions. And just as we did in Parsvottanasana, we're learning how to employ the muscles around the ribs to wrap the package. Inhale, come up, slide the legs to straight. And then if we try, as we head toward the closing postures, we try the, the classic reverse posture of a forward fold. First, the modification, reverse tabletop, pulling one foot, pulling the other. And what you're gonna do with this one is launch the hips forward, but, Watch these frontal ribs. So I can cheat and keep them open, but it's dangerous. So if I pull my tailbone toward my knees and close the frontal ribs, that's a different experience. Try it a few times. If you have shoulder injury, you can take your fingers out. Keep the chin tucked unless you get that tone or that wrap of the ribs. And that allows you to go back. Inhale, exhale. Roll the frontal ribs together, push the knees and tailbone forward. Then you can drop. Head comes up last if you're doing that. Advanced students straighten your legs, and only advanced students. And in Permotanasana, with straight legs, the legs are spiraling inward just as the rib cage spirals inward. So that we're not gonna let the legs open like froggy. So do whichever one you want, but as you come up, 
you spiral the inner thighs, tailbone forward, wrap the frontal ribs, and then come down, heads last. Forward fall, rinse. Now, we're going to move toward the close. Two more postures. With your towel roll, you can do a modified plow by taking the towel roll under the low back and allowing the legs, you're working in a wall, to rest against the wall. It's a little safer. If you want to do your normal plow and roll back and have the feet on the ground, do a shoulder stand, go for it. But otherwise, here's how it looks. I gauge my distance from the wall. You may need to take a few tries. I go down and I lift the hips up as we did earlier in class. Take the towel roll under the low back, pull the knees in, and take the feet to the wall. So if I need to get a little closer, your head should be about four to six inches from the wall. And I can work against the towel roll and find my plow. So play with that a little bit and see if you can keep your low back safe by having it supported with the towel. And here is a nice stretch for the backs of the legs. You can even bend the knees a little. But you're getting some information. And then when you're ready to come down, the legs come down, the hips lift, remove the towel roll. And this could be your shavasana, or you want, the med students want a little bit more playing with the possibility of handstand. I know Kate's going to want to do her handstand. But others that want to experience handstand, we've done this before, we use our towel roll as before, and take it under the mid-back. And if you're working against the wall, here's what happens. I press my handstand arms into the wall, I straighten my legs, and I feel that same experience, the towel rolls under the shoulder blades, of fortifying the sensation in the back ribs and rolling the frontal ribs together as I tone the legs. Those that would prefer to take a bridge and wheel, and or wheel, take a peek. You can use my towel roll to preset the opening pattern with the hips, where I tone a little bit, even though this is a back bend, I tone these frontal ribs, tame them. Could take the hands back if I'm coming to wheel. Same thing as that reverse tabletop. I slide the hips forward and then I start to press and open. Coming down and take the towel roll and start to come toward Shavasana or one last thing for advanced students, try your handstand. So before you do handstand, if you're close, but eh, not so good, you can use the wall for your legs and down dog, one leg up the wall, start to walk your hands in and stretch into a straddle like Hanuman Awesome. Try the other leg. This is for the advanced students. And please, don't do this if you're not advanced. Now watch. Before I even attempt a handstand, I can go up the wall with both legs, look forward, pull the frontal ribs in, and here's my handstand. That's it. So I think uh, all these celebrities are doing handstands. That's how some of them were doing it. And of course, the little gymnast 
beat Jake Gyllenhaal, beat everybody. So those that have a real handstand now should be ready to face the wall and take your downward dog, walk in, try to lift up. And if you get up, lengthen from that area we had the strap and even tuck your chin toward your chest and then let the head lengthen. So the arm roots have to be solid. Shavasana. Take a few breaths and place your hands on your frontal ridge as you lay in Shavasana. And we've worked in this area, so now we have to experience the other part of activation is deactivation. If you're going to walk around all day with this snake coiled around your diaphragm, you might be really strong, but you might be very tense. So make your way seated. And often in my meditation class, I have people just take their hands to their belly and you can feel the rib cage open and close or even the backs of the hands, the back ribs and feel that breath coming in and out, relaxing the throat, the tongue. Ha, huh. and just release it. Otherwise, you're carrying it. And then, of course, we can use sound to deactivate. Deactivate our holding at the same time, issuing, inviting in this greater energy around us, however you want to classify it, religious or otherwise. So let's take an ohm. Inhale. Let it all out. Oh. 